doing, Carrie? Good. How are you? Oh my gosh, I am just, I'm so excited to have a person that I've literally been watching on movies, in the movies, since I was a little girl. Oh, thank you. I, I know, you don't want to hear that. No, no. How old, how old are you again? <laughs> I'm... Right. I'm 12. Right, I'm, <laughs> I'm still a little girl. I'm 12 years old. Um, and, and you know what's really funny? Because anytime I mention this to friends that you were coming in, everybody, you know, does their Princess Bride quotes back to me. And I'm not as good with the Princess Bride quotes, but I'm really good with the Robin Hood Men in Tights quotes. Okay. So that's, you know, probably... And then, of course, you're going to, I can't do those in front of you. All I know is every time that you said a chew, I used to laugh. That's about it. <laughs> I can't be put on the spot or in front of the guy. Um, but uh, you're in town today because of Saw. That's right. Which, um, uh, this is really an interesting event that you guys are doing. It is called a uh, the Texas Frightmare Weekend. Right. So you are going to be doing uh, all this stuff with the... Uh, th all the Saw legends. Who else is in town again? Costas Mandalore and Shawnee Smith. And everybody knows uh, for sure that Shawnee Smith is the scary dude, right? No, no, she's the... Oh, she's the... She was in the first one. We, we did the first one together. This... And she ended up becoming one of... Yeah, she became one of the, 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 the minions of Jigsaw. And Costas Mandalore is the scary... He's the scary, scary guy. Scary guy. And uh, so... You know, just surrounding this whole thing, knowing you as an actor and all the stuff that you've done. We were in here talking earlier about, um, I forgot the fact that you're really good at playing a jerk. And I love ah, that about you. I love you. that. Um, I guess there's a jerk deep down inside. There is! That needs to be explored. Yes. Should you do more jerk roles, maybe? Is that what we need? I don't know. You know, you know. I think it's more bad guys that I play than... than Jerks. I guess you can... You could call them jerks or bad guys, whatever. I, I, it's being British. The Brits get a lot of jerk roles. <laughs> we, we have that attitude that, that people seem to think works well for playing bad guys. It's the accent. It's the accent. Yes, because you're... The, and the attitude. <laughs> and you, long noses for looking down at your with. If you just talk like that, we just assume you're mean. Right? Oh, how dare they with their attitude. But when, I, when the camera first came to you in Saw... Mm. I was like, "What? What is he doing? This is the, you know, this is Carrie. Right. From, you know what? What attracted you to something like this? Because I'm sure at the beginning of the Saw franchise, nobody saw what this was going to do. No, actually, it was um, it was a very low budget film. They were planning on making it for a less, a little less than a million dollars, and it was going to be an 18 day shoot, <laughs> which I've never heard of. Yeah, and. The producers came to me and they sent me the script along with a 10-minute DVD that the director, James Wan, and, and his partner, um, who is the writer, his, his writing partner, I should say, uh, who's in the movie, Lee Wanell, mm -hmm. they'd made this little short, this little scene that they put together back in Melbourne, Australia, from the, mo from the script to, to give the producers an idea of how the movie would look. And... I read the script in one reading, and then I put on the DVD and watched it, and I was blown away by the level of talent that James Wan had, mm -hmm. and, and the writing, that, the talent of writing that, that Lee had. And I was so impressed with their vision of the piece that I said, yeah, let me sit down and meet them. Huh. And, and when I met them both, they were so charming and sweet and bright and funny and interesting people that I just knew right away I wanted to be a part of it. They weren't scurry? I know, it's funny, you, you, you know, it teaches you not to judge a book by its cover, but right. you get the script and it's so dark and weird, and, and I was expecting these kind of goth guys to show up, you know, with, with uh, giant hairpins and uh, noses and stuff, and, and they were totally uh, fun, loving, very cool, you know, film geeks who just, you know, adored horror movies and wanted to bring that kind of uh, genre back, and they did. You know, they they basically are responsible for all the, 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 the horror movies that we now have that are cheap and and uh, exciting and, and uh, have brought a, a renaissance of the horror film. Right, right because like, you, you now see, you know, from the producers of Saw, and, right. you know, it's uh, it's it's insane. I'll, I'll, right. Um, and, and you were basically, for that whole movie, you are just basically sitting in a room. That's well, here's their concept. They, they wanted to make the movie for no money. Okay. Back in Melbourne, they were going to shoot it for about fifteen thousand dollars. Okay. And their concept was came was born out of out of lack of funds. 
you know, um, they, when I sat down with them, I said, how did you come up with this idea? They said, well, we had no money, so we <laughs> thought, you know, what we'll do is we'll have a couple of actors and keep them on one set, you know, and then, but we thought, how can we keep them on one set so we'd have to chain them to the wall? <laughs> and then we thought, well, why are they chained to the wall? And the whole idea was born out of economics. And I thought okay. that was so brilliant. Yeah. But they didn't, they couldn't afford a, a, a room that had a window because they couldn't afford a, a, you know, a backdrop. So there had to be a windowless room. So they decided that had to be a bathroom. So the whole kind of concept was born out of how do we make this for the lowest amount of money we can possibly make, uh, do it for, and, and that's how it came about. I thought that was so ingenious. Right, yeah. And sometimes the best ideas are built out of, you know, what can you do with the little things that you have, yeah, you know? what you have. Yeah, and uh, I, I like I like an Englishman doing Australian. Mm -hmm. You just made my morning, to be honest. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be offended, and I'm sorry if I offended any Australians listening in this morning. <laughs> uh, my I'm... apologies for my rotten Australian accent. <laughs> I'm very happy. Um, so, w did you realize? Okay, so then you do this movie, and then it spins off. So, does that change your sort of celebrity at this point? Were people a little bit less uh, Princess Bride to you, and more like, "Saw, oh my God, you're the Saw guy." <laughs> Is that what happens now? Well, they're definitely two different kinds of fans. Well, right? yeah. You know, I mean, they don't really hang out much. It's <laughs> just Bride fans and the Saw fans. You know? <laughs> they're not. They're not like uh, Facebook friends, you know. Well, right. But um, uh, yeah, no, it's great. Listen, you're lucky as an actor to be part of anything that has any kind of resonance and, and, and longevity, and. Um, we had, like you said, we had no idea this film would take off. We, it, like I said, it cost less than a million, and it opened and made a hundred million dollars. So um, it became this runaway success and spawned this huge franchise, and now this incredible following. That's really cool. And and we have, you know, so many people to thank for that. There's so many loyal fans out there, and I'm hoping the ones in Texas and the ones who've flown in, and I look forward to meeting all of them this weekend. Um, because they're the ones who campaign, they blog, they wrote, they, they email, they, they, they're the real die-hard fans that have, that have made this franchise what it is today. And um, as far as what's going on this weekend, you guys are going to be at the Sheraton Grand DFW Hotel. Right. Um, if you guys want information, go to TexasFrightmareWeekend.com. Uh, you guys are doing, now this Ultimate Saw Reunion, has this ever happened before? No, this is the one, one time only. This is it. This is it. After this, it's a wrap. Are you guys doing like a panel, like the three of you, or you, yes? Yeah, okay. Doing a panel. <laughs> I love you. are like, I don't know. Let me check know. with my dude. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, you're doing two doing. panels, is that right? Two. Okay, cool. All yeah. right. In case you missed the first one, there'll be a second one. All right, and are, you're gonna. Be, I'm assuming like signing autographs and doing Absolutely. all that. Absolutely. Anything you need, we'll take care of it in terms of um, memorabilia and signing and photographs, all of that. And I will say, I mean, I've, I've just been hanging out with you for a while. You're, you're a nice guy. You're not a jerk. I mean, even Thank though, you. like, you were a jerk in Twister, and you were a jerk <laughs> in Days of Thunder, and you were, I mean, you're pretty good at that. You know, Thank you. That's kind of your thing. Um, and one thing, the other thing, too, that I'm sure a lot of Saw fans may or may not know, I've heard that this Saw franchise that now has been built is kind of like one of those franchises in Hollywood people want to get into and they can't. It's like a, it's like a family. Is that the deal? Like what the people, mean? I've heard that the crew and the and, and it's just like this really tight knit group of people that work on these movies now. Yes. Yeah. Is that the deal? Yeah, very much so. Well, I mean, you know, the producers are very smart. Once the the franchise took off, they moved the whole production to Toronto and set it up in a in um in their own studios there, so that it, it you know became a almost. Um, a studio built specifically for making Saw movies. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, they hired the same crew and the same people. So it became really a, a, a small, close knit family mm -hmm. out there. And uh, do you know anything about these people who are sick in the head and build these contraptions? <laughs> I'm sure. You know, look, if you're in your basement making something right now, please <clears throat> don't try it out on anyone but yourself. Okay. <laughs> That's the one thing. And and, 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 and honestly, if, if you're into uh, hurting yourself, that's fine. But just make sure you have a you know a contact number, 
and a cell phone nearby in case something goes wrong. That's the one thing I've always thought about when I watch these movies. Like, it's really scary. This is really, I mean, I'm really into this, and I can't wait for the next one. But who the hell is thinking of this crap? I mean, it's scary. Like, who came up with this idea? It's all James Wan. You have to you have to blame James, and uh, he's a really great guy. I, I hope you get a chance to bring him in here and meet him yourself. He's a nice guy. He's got lots of children, and he's got a <laughs> tomato garden. <in> his. <laughs> I mean, really? I know he's really nice. He's really nice. Yeah, he plays his piano too. That's a great guy. Uh, Carrie, I I mean, I just think you're amazing. And I'm oh, I am also um, before I let you go, I have to tell you, I'm a. I think one of the other first movies I saw that I loved you in was The Crush. No way. Did anybody else see that movie, or was I the only one? I think you were one of maybe ten people. <laughs> Thank you. That's very sweet. Of and I, I think they re-ran it on Showtime like 800 times. Really? So I saw it every time. Uh, it's a, I'm, listen, it's a wonderful movie. I'm pretty proud of it. It's, uh, it's the first movie Alicia Silverstone was in, so that, that in of itself is a wonderful thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, we shot that in Vancouver many, many many, 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 many years ago. I'm not going to tell you how old I was when I saw that. Yeah. Um, I, I'm just so happy that uh, you took the time to come in here and talk to us. And if you guys want to meet him in person, he is so, so cool. And uh, not at all the jerk that was in, uh, in <laughs> Twist. <laughs> I've been giving him crap about that. Uh, please go to uh, TexasFrightmareWeekend.com to get all the info. They're going to be there uh, today, tomorrow, and Sunday at the Sheraton Grand uh, DFW Hotel. All three Saw Legends are going to be there all weekend. This is it. This is the only time they're going to do it. So if you're a freak about this stuff, this is the only time to see it. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Gary. Thanks for having me.